Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the Kubernetes Public Steering Committee meeting. Today is June first, June June first, Monday, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, this meeting is being recorded publicly. So please keep in mind that whatever you say will be recorded for eternity. Uh, we have a code of conduct, so please remember to be excellent to each other. Okay. Uh, we uh, have a very light agenda today. Um, starting with Lucky, you wanted to talk about the steering uh, election officers for the 2020 election. Uh, Thank you. One yeah, before before I start, do we need a note taker? Would anyone like to volunteer for note taking? I can Thank do you it. so much, Sharon. Yeah. Go ahead, Lucky. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Wonderful, no worries whatsoever. Thank you, Nikita. So uh, George uh, Castro had put in this issue several weeks ago about uh, spinning up the work that needs to happen for the 2020 steering election. Uh, the, I put three points, I think the main points out of that issue. I had had a conversation with Christoph about this um, and I think somebody probably needs to pick this up um, from the steering perspective, but I was interested in rerunning for that election. So Christoph had suggested maybe uh, have somebody else on steering actually work on the organization of that, which I think is a good idea. Um, so I just wanted to call it to attention and get it prioritized correctly on the backlog um, as we have a little bit of leeway at the moment to make it happen. Um, so if anybody on steering wants to kick that off, I just wanted to draw it to attention that it is on the backlog. I think that's all I had. Are there any other comments? Uh, I agree. Um, it's the backlog. Can we talk about go ahead, a second? Uh, Christoph, maybe you have an opinion. I'm just like paging all this in. If you have an opinion ready to go, go for it. I just want to understand what the dates are. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just going to suggest like, um, typically the elections are, are the actual mechanics of running the election um, is something that um, Contribex typically takes care of. Um, and I'm wondering, like, other than, other than George, who's involved in that, I know Eeyore, you've been involved in that previously. Um, is, is there specific things that um, the election folks from Contribex need no. from us? Is it just looking for somebody from steering to be involved in that process or, or yeah, what, 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 what's needed there? If, if Eeyore has that context, basically, I know George is on the meeting today. I think we have George, uh, Mr. Bobby Tails and myself as the uh, election committee we had for the last year. And our agreement was that we, uh, we have the rotation of folks um, every year, at least one, one person from the election officers group um, steps down and is being replaced by someone else. And obviously this person who steps up, who is an election officer, is not able to run for the election. Um, so that's mostly it, that context that I have right now. Uh, yeah, the only other thing okay. I see there, Ehor, is I'm just looking at the ticket. So expanding the group of potential election officers, and there is a question specifically to ask former steering members as potentially being a valuable source. But yeah, I don't know what the direct contributions for steering need to be. That, uh, the concept here, the context here is referring to the ex steering committee members who can step up as the election officers. And also Paris is joining now. So Paris was an election officer for a couple of cycles. So probably Paris may have also some sorts of news. So the, is it just the thing that's required from us is signing off on who we're appointing as the election officers and then they take it from there? Yep, yeah, basically, yeah. And 
and say send off the the final the final votes the, the final uh, final actions and all that stuff. So Syrian, uh, the Kubernetes Syrian is not directly involved into the interaction process, but stands on the highest level of, of like we're seeing it. So what I fail to see on the schedule is the date by which we are supposed to have chosen election officers. Uh, other, well, okay, so it says end of July, uh, election officers, voter eligibility criteria uh, should all be done. It's unclear to me what election preparation means. Um, so I think what is on our plate for this month is uh, to consider uh, whom we might want to ask to be election officers. So technically we have until the very end of next month to decide, uh, but we should probably have a pretty good idea uh, by our next public steering committee meeting. Yeah, um, I, I don't mind taking this one up myself. Uh, I am not, my, my seat is not up for election this year. So I, I can take at least the initial parts of trying to collect together who might be uh, um, open to being an election officer um, and, and, and at least doing that piece. Cause then it seems like once we have the election officers selected then they kind of carry forward all the rest of the points from there. I wish we could delegate this part to Contribex, by the way. Yo, I'm the selecting the officers piece. Yeah, and then we would we would just be the approvers of those people. Sounds great. To, to be honest, that's how I thought it had already worked. That's but, good. And that, but in that, but it, that is actually how it's worked in the past. And then we've gone to steering and said, hey, can we have approval for these people? And then it, it's been done. So I feel like the language of the policy needs to be changed. That's kind of what my point was as well. So I feel like we should change policy language to say that contributor experience comes to steering at a certain date like by the end, by July 1 every year with a list of potential election officials and then, and then we vote on it. Sounds like somebody's volunteering to update the docs. I will volunteer. <laughs> Harris, you already have a lot on your plate. I can help too. <laughs> what, let's do it. One more. <laughs> I honestly don't mind taking that. <laughs> if it's just the policy change, I can take it. Oh, nice glasses. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure. What, why, why don't, if, why don't you take that piece on Lofty as far as updating the documentation and as far as executing on the policy as it's written for the current cycle, I can do that and just make sure that we have election officers for the current cycle talk with Contribex, get some volunteers, and then we have updated language for the next time we got to do this. Um, just to confirm, uh, we've also talked in the past about updating the uh, criteria for members of standing. Would you be taking care of that from the steering and Contribex side as well? I mean, I'm happy to help in this too. I just wanted to um, talk about So it doesn't necessarily say how that's done. I think like I am, my, my gut tells me after officer selection, like let the election officers come to us with a set of criteria, but. Adam. Uh, I, I'm happy to have them come to us with criteria. I feel like what I have done in the past is compare who the criteria will select and what the turnout is and things like that. It feels like we've consistently been getting the same absolute number of voters regardless of the criteria that we choose for what it's worth. Um, but to Christoph's point, I believe 
um, I believe Mr. Bobby Tables has been kind of deep into uh, membership criteria. And so I'd be happy to see what he comes up with. Um, and I can put myself, uh, I can, uh, I can sign up to be the person who uh, approves that or whatever, or works with works with him to come up with appropriate criteria. Yeah, I had a conversation with Bob uh, this few weeks back. I don't want to put words into Bob's mouth, uh, but we were talking about how if if we update the members of standing criteria to restrict it a bit more, it uh, like greatly reduces the work for election officers. And so if we are asking folks to step up as election officers and maybe they don't have enough cycles and if we like define that you don't, have, you don't need to spend too much time on this. Maybe more folks would step up if we're especially talking about uh, previous steering committee members. I think they kind of go hand in hand, but I'd be okay with like following up with this with uh, Bob later. Okay. Uh, does that sound like Nikita, you and I are gonna follow up with Bob on election criteria for next meeting? Yep, yeah, sounds good. Cool. So to recap, Aaron and I are going to talk to Bob about the election criteria and Christoph's going to take and uh, Paris is going to update the policy language uh, uh, to say that Contrabex will bring candidates to steering by July 1st, and Christoph will take care of executing this policy for the current cycle. Sound good? And uh, who will take care of the election officer's selection? Uh, that's process? me. I, I, I'm, I'm taking that piece, and I'm going to go and um, I'm going to go talk to Contribax and, and solicit first there who, who might be interested um and um i'm pretty sure they already look have. through yeah <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's already happened so your conversation is just gonna be with bob and bob's gonna be like here's your election officers <laughs> i'm i'm gonna jump through the hoops anyways i just added it to the, the next contribex meeting in two days Okay, before we move on, anything else on the election stuff? I'll take that as a no. Um, Dems, you have a bunch of items about funding. <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, some of it is just updates. So um, the digital ocean credits are uh, through. Um, so um, Chris and Ehor helped line that up. So that's already done. Yeah, and I, I can confirm that I've today I've received the first invoice from DigitalOcean that the first 25 cents have been used. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yay. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good. Uh, the other one was uh, the audit thing that we've been talking about for some time, uh, that request, uh, you know, we opened a service desk ticket and Chris responded saying that uh, they budgeted the same amount of dollars as last time. Uh, and if uh, the audit committee um, should go proceed and figure out uh, what it's going to take this time. So that's the status update on that uh, audit one. Then the other one that came up was Minikube. Uh, Minikube wants to do something different. Uh, because of some testing that they need to do on Windows and they need uh, credits for AWS. Um, so Ehor, uh, should I create a service test ticket and go with that? Uh, I had a few questions regarding that. So if you find, like, if you can discuss it right now, I'm open for it. Yeah, so uh, can... yeah two of us uh, responded on that uh, um, questions from you. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, basically what we were saying was, it's not for general testing, it's for specific testing. Uh, there are specific scenarios that will only be tested on AWS, mm -hmm. uh, on Windows. Um, so uh, 
and the regular things that we the, we can't use pro we can't use um, you know the other uh, providers and stuff like that so there is some mm-hmm. limitations so uh, they would want like 10 vms um, you know uh, mm-hmm. whatever it takes for for uh, that okay uh, yeah for some reason i haven't haven't seen this, this update so no worries. Uh, uh, I'll uh, just open a service desk ticket and we can continue there. So yeah, yeah, no, no problem. So uh, just to clarify, like what what is the reason why I've asked all these questions? So we have we have a good number of AWS credits, but they're still limited. Mm-hmm. So if we don't explicitly need AWS, we can also offer some alternative options. So if you just want Windows Absolutely. somewhere right. in the cloud, we can offer you the bare metal infrastructure package. Right. So, uh, so, so typically what I end up, uh, that's exactly what I ask first. Um, what are you testing? Where are you testing? How are you testing? Mm-hmm. What are, these are the, our current options. Why, why does the current options not work? So I, I go through that checklist. So mm-hmm. I ended up doing that. I called up uh, uh, Media, I think, mm-hmm. and talked to him. And then I raised the issue to you. So uh, I'll do the service desk ticket and we can go from there. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Aaron. A real quick question out of curiosity. Why was, uh, why was Prow not an option? Uh, the, so they, they are not running, they want to run a mini cube VM. So, and they want to run it in a windows environment. Okay. So pro can be used to launch the job, but there has to be some place where you actually run it. And that place where you run it has to be AWS VM. Okay. So uh, what they have done so far is um, they've gotten credits from Microsoft. So thanks Microsoft for uh, Azure. So, and they set up a GitHub runner in Microsoft, uh, in Azure, and they are testing some integration with Azure. So similarly, they want to do a testing with AWS. And that's that's, uh, part of the reason why uh, this uh, request came to us. Okay. I mean, I, I feel like we have crowd jobs that definitely like launch VMs in uh, other clouds and could potentially SSH to them and do stuff. Uh, right. They are not starting from scratch. They want to use their existing harness right. to a different cloud. And they want to use a pull mechanism instead of a push mechanism, right? So, right. Um, and it, if Worst case scenario, we can go and tell them, no, you have to rewrite everything from scratch and use Pro, but I, I don't want to go there if it's not required. Uh, I hear you. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Uh, back to you, Nikita. Awesome. Um, that's kind of the open mic discussions we had on the agenda. Before I walk through the project board, does anyone have anything they want to mention or add? Um, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Dems. Uh, thanks to Dan Khan for running uh, the CNCF Foundation for a while. Um, and welcome to uh, Priyanka. And, uh... Thank you to both. Yes, definitely. Paris, you had something to say? Um, it might be covered in Boardwalk. Um, I wanted to talk about the TO, oh, not, not TOC. Oh my gosh, wrong, wrong body already. Um, I wanted to talk about the steering committee liaisons with the community groups so that we could potentially roll out and implement the community group reporting for just the working groups. Um, but I don't know if, if you want to cover that with the with the boardwalk or if we should just do it as a separate combo. We can do it with the boardwalk, yes. Okay. Right. Kind of like let's the first few topics anyway. Yeah, let's do it. Let me share my screen. Okay. Um, 
Um, I have one, I mean, not much of an update, kind of a non-update. Uh, this was blocked because we are waiting on WebOb to uh, kind of elaborate on why we need this. We haven't received a response yet. So I'll follow up with Bob later to see if we can just close this or if we need some follow up here. Cool. Uh, I think this is Blocker. Derek, uh, Derek, do you have updates on the unconscious bias training? Uh, no, unless something's in my email for when I can click the link to get the schedule, but um, I still haven't completed it. No worries. Moving on, SIG bleeds mailing list needs to go under G Suite. Aaron, I think you were working on this. Um, I think I said all I need is for somebody to provide the list of email addresses. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And for what it's worth, my concern about it um, one of the concerns I had was that this was going to put an undue burden on those of us who have to manually reconcile Google Groups. Uh, so I scratched an itch on Friday, and Prow will do that for us now. So go nuts. Uh, so where, where can we add the list? Uh, the group's YAML file and Kate's IO. Just okay, the, cool. Yeah, open a PR against that and assign Christoph for myself. Okay. Um, nice work, Adam. So, yeah, definitely that simplifies so much. Um, that is, uh, are you going to open the PR or should I assign someone to this? Um, you can but, assign me, you can assign me and multiple people. Uh, you can assign me and George and Bob and or uh, Eeyore. Well, yeah, one of one of us will do it. And um, if it's still sitting by tomorrow, then I'll do it. I'm gonna just assign all of these people. And if you want, just assign me, and then I'll assign the rest of them. Okay. Yeah, just to make things faster for you. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Um, I will not open this issue because we talked about this in the GitHub management call last week. Uh, things are in progress. It's remaining, the cube AWS is remaining and uh, things are in discussion. So it's in progress. It should get close soon. Uh, does anyone want to? mention anything about this before I move to the next one. Okay. SIG cluster amend the charter. Uh, it's in review and I think Christoph uh, and Aaron had commented on it and I uh, this is probably on me to unblock. I feel so. Um, the concern I had was it felt like this was removing ownership of upgrade downgrade policy, and there wasn't a SIG to hold that anymore. Uh, I think SIG Arch or SIG architecture, uh, based on uh, Tim's and uh, Lubomir's opinion in the charter architecture agrees they should be the owners of uh, upgrade downgrade policy. Uh, so I think my concerns with this charter change are addressed, uh, but I'd like to actually land uh, the SIG architecture charter change. Um, so I will take that as an action item. Sounds good. Okay, um, initial draft of travel sponsorship. I know some things went on here after the last meeting. Can we close this PR and move the discussion to an issue or would you, uh, Tim's and you or would you all like to keep this open? I think we can close it. Uh, I sent an email out uh, asking for when we would hear about uh, 
things opening up for Boston. I haven't gotten a response back. I will follow up uh, at some point with Priyanka once she gets her uh, feet wet. Cool. Um, I think there's an issue open for it. So after this meeting, I'll link the issue and close this PR. Thank you. We discussed about the funding thing. So this is all that we had in progress. Moving to the backlog. Uh, let's talk about community group liaison. I'm, I'm sorry, Paris, that it took so long to get here. But... You are totally fine. Christoph, do you have any updates? Um, no, <laughs> no, this is, this is on me. Um, and this just kind of fell off my to-do list. Um, but it's easy enough to do. I'll, I'll just create a Google doc with, you know, a listing of, of everything and start seeding it. And then we can, uh, I'll post out to the committee and we can figure out how to split everything up. Sounds good. I know where he's like, these are crazy. Times. Are crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, Paris, did you have anything you want to add here? Um, not necessarily to here. I don't know if this is if this is like required for us to get going on working group annual reports or not. I feel like it might be just because these individuals are going to be going to the working groups and telling them about the annual reports and getting them prepared for it. Uh, or if I don't, I don't know if we just want to do this Wild Wild West style and everybody on the call right now picks a working group and we go. Um, so I guess for the working group annual report piece, how should we launch? I think one way or another, we need to, we need to split everything up. Um, doing it, whether we do it officially or do it unofficially, it, I think it's about the same amount of work to, to get it done. Um, okay. I can, like I can, I can have the spreadsheet put out to everybody this afternoon and we can figure it out. So I, I, I I think one way or another, we, we, we need to do it. And I apologize that it hasn't been done already, but I'll, I'll, I'll get something out and then we can figure out a way to split up all the all different groups. And I added some other open-ended questions in the annual report issue, things like the timeline, which is uh, just, you know, one of the obvious ones, but then also something that might not be that obvious. What do these liaisons need to be, need to have to be successful with coaching and prepping the working group organizers for the reports? Um, like, should we have any kind of materials with us? Like, I don't know, I, I wanted to kind of have a discussion around how we actually prepare and coach these folks with doing their reports. Um, I mean, for instance, do we just send them the, the, the policy and, or, you know, do we go to one of their meetings and then tell them about the new change? Should we email them? Like, what's the process there look like? Or should just like the liaison, all the liaisons just figure it out and do something different? Aaron, I see you. I'm a working group organizer who's going to have to submit one of these reports. Where's the questionnaire that I have to fill out? It's in the policy document. Where is that? Uh, under Kubernetes slash community slash annual report or slash Kubernetes community slash committee dash steering slash annual reports dot MD. Okay. And then um, in there is going to be a form, like an actual like Google Doc form or a template of sorts, but all the questions that are in that markdown doc, folks will be responsible for answering in some kind of a template that we provide. But all of the questions are in the markdown file right now. 
Okay, so I feel like a first step would be making that Google Doc. Okay, and then after that? Um, so I can work with my co-organizers to try and draft answers to these questions. Um, what would be the next step once we feel like we kind of have these questions answered? Turning them into steering, submitting them to steering dash private. Okay. But like, so take it, take the fact that you are a working group organizer, take your hat off and just leave to, the steering and just leave the steering hat too. And like, how would you coach yourself through that? I guess. Right. Like, cause you are an organizer. I'm trying to have you coach me is, is essentially what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, we can stop role playing if you'd like, that's fine. Um, what is this, some like Jedi mind trick crap? What's going on? No, I'm <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess we get the liaison. So what I'm hearing is kind of like we get the liaisons. We have a Google template of some variety uh, that with the questions that are in the Markdown doc. You show up at a meeting as a, as a steering committee liaison and meeting being working group meeting. Uh, you say, hey, I'm here to do this thing with y'all. And how can I help you do this? Um, or what help can I provide you? And then you give them a deadline, 30, 60, 90, whatever. Uh, and then you tell them to submit it to steering dash private and give them a copy of the policy. Okay. Does that mind sound mind? like... Uh, do Go each ahead. of my organizers have to answer their own version of the questionnaire? No. Or do we all collaborate together. It's all, it's a collaborative effort, but the chairs need or the organizers need to submit. That's the the responsibility is the chair submits, um, but the chair can collaborate and delegate uh, the responses. Okay, so just some of the earlier questions talk about like you and your role. So Dims, in this case, Dims and Bart and I would all have to answer when we became organizers and whether we're looking to continue to find replacements. And stuff. I think that was one of the open-ended things that I don't know if we ever got it resolved. Um, I was a proponent of everybody submits their own um, answer to that anonymously so that we could get better responses, but I think other people in steering said that all of their responses should be on the same thing so that everybody can see them. Um, is there a like preference there with other folks? Do other folks have preferences there with that question? opinions. I think more my, my opinion was just trying to like keep it simple as opposed to multiple forms that, that somebody needed to needed to fill out. Um, I guess it was I think we I think we landed uh, uh, on the policy. It's like it says that uh, everybody submit, you submit one report, but if you need to tell us something privately, then to one off us. Okay, that sounds appropriate. Yeah. I just want to, I don't want the loudest voice to win. Um, I'd like to make sure we're hearing the full, the full story. Hey Paris, this is Derek. I think the working group questions look um, great. The one thing I was trying to think through quietly in my head was, um, if there's bi-directional engagement of the working group with the SIG that sponsors it. Um, and I guess we cover that in the working group section that they do a check-in. What I was wondering is if we cover anything in the SIG section to also have a Yes, a I think we do. Um, Nikita, can you scroll up just a, a smidge? Yeah. Um, if not, we could put it. 
No, I can I can I put remember. that in there. I thought I remember this. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that too. Huh. Oh, I can add it if not. Um, I think, you know what I think, I think it was originally in the SIG section and then we moved it to the working group section. Uh, yeah. I can check version control, but I'm pretty sure that the people were saying that the ownness should be on the working group. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think I remember the discussion now. The discussion was that we don't have a SIG, we don't have a good SIG to working group mapping, but we have a working group to multiple six mapping uh, and that's why we uh, we let working groups talk more about their check-ins with six but i guess we could do the other way around too one thing i was just trying to think through is um my historical memory on working groups was that six own code and working groups don't and so i was trying to think if there were outliers to uh, to that, um, where like if we had a way of saying, of kind of like catching any outliers that might exist with that, and it's possible that we might have them existing or not. Um, we can, uh, I, I can add something like that in the second. Uh, so, so, as far as timeline, oh, go ahead, sorry, Dems. Yeah, um, just to answer that question, I think Kate's, uh, the w working group infra and uh, Kate's infra and the multi-tenancy group, working group, both have repositories. Yeah, the, the multi-tenancy one was the one I was having in my mind, which is, it's not, I wasn't sure how much bi-directional reporting is done to between the sponsoring SIG, which I can't remember, honestly. Um, right. That definitely needs uh, uh, to be addressed, Derek. So how long do we give working group organizers to do the report? I feel like at least 30 days. Do we hear 60 or 90, 45? I feel like I we're forbidden right now. <laughs> no. I, <There's laughs> not much difference between I, 30 and 45 or 30 yeah. and because it's going to be done only at the last minute. So I think 30 and, is and the, the thing is about giving folks a little bit longer is it just gives them more runway for planning. Like there will be some things that will may need to like start asking questions early and then they'll complete the report at the last minute, which is probably what they'll do. My, my thought my on God says groups, 30 might be a little short, but. My, my thought on working groups was unlike, well, I don't want to say that it might not be fair because members of a working group may have the same burdens. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess my initial thought was uh, it, it's easy to mistake that maybe members of a working group, this is their dominant activity, when in reality, it might be like their 10% activity. And so it's hard to come up with a good uh, timeline on that, I guess. What if we just say 30 days and if you need more, let us know. Right. Or some kind of like innuendo of like, keep keep the communication door open. I mean, and also you'll have the TOC. Um, I keep saying TOC. I'm sorry, y'all. We'll also have the steering committee liaisons there too to like help prep. And obviously, like you know, working group Kate Simfra has got a, an advantage with Dims and Aaron and things like that. Um, but if we say like, okay, this is due in 30 days from the time I land on, you know, at your meeting or whatever it is. Um, and then if you need more time or help, reach out to me. Me is the like, you know, whatever that, whoever that liaison is. Um, does that sound fair? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I, type I, up this I, process. I, 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 Go ahead. No, I've done nothing more useful to say. Oh, um, 
I'm sorry, I thought you were gonna go into something. Um, I'll just go ahead and type up this process and put it in a PR somewhere, um, probably on this same document. Uh, and then let's roll. Is everybody cool with that? All right. Cool. I'll take that as an action so we can complete this out and I'll complete out that issue as well. Awesome. Another uh, point of process question. Is the intent we go do this for all working groups at once or are we trying to stagger this? I say at once, but I don't know if anybody else has any other opinion. I just feel like it's more fair if it's at once because then everybody's getting the information at the same time. And if you are a, you know, a leader of multiple working groups, you at least are aware of what's ahead of you so you can delegate and plan. Um, that's just, that's my personal take. Any other opinions there or facts or concerns? I think at once sounds good and we also have liaison so it shouldn't be like all of the burden shouldn't fall on one person anywhere. I just consider uh, we probably don't have this problem but uh, if all 10 working groups need something done to, or something to be addressed uh, it's kind of unclear to me whether each liaison is responsible for doing that, or if we as a committee are gonna to get together uh, and come to consensus on each of those things. Um, so it's just a question of maybe our bandwidth in response. Um, but I am willing to use this as our trial run to understand how to more appropriately shape our work in progress for six. I was thinking that, uh, you know, in our public meeting and private meeting, we, we would continuously bring up um, whatever questions or issues, uh, spend some time, five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, going over those uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, and, and also, I mean, we say four weeks, it's probably gonna take six weeks, but you know, this is our first run, so should be fine, Aaron. Okay. Cool. Um, do we have the timeline for when we start reaching out to working groups? Mid June. Questions Next for week. Paris, Nikita? Um, I would say, yeah, I'd say as soon as we have the liaisons and the template and, you know, I guess we've all had some kind of talk, whether it's in Slack or the mailing list or at a, an, or one of our next meetings. And then I say we just open the gates and then iterate. Okay, so let's plan to get things lined up by next public meeting and yep. just open the floodgate at that point. Yep. Uh, there's a part, I don't know how strongly y'all feel, but there's a part of me that's like code freeze uh, happens. No, that's fine. Never mind. I'm yeah. good with that. Yep. Yeah. What's the release schedule look like? I mean, are, that's the other thing. Are we going to be buttoned up against other major Cherry picked things going on in the project? project. So okay. the approximately code freeze deadline is end of June. Cherry pick deadline is end of July. So there's a part of me that was thinking, what if we launched in the middle of the month? Um, but I guess um, it'll be what it'll be. I'm, I'm updating the issue live too, by the way. Uh, I did have another question here, uh, Paris Nikita, which is what do we do with after we get all the reports? What do we as a body do with them other than go through them 
um, do we then turn around and tell we everyone tell how how we did as in how each all the working groups did and come up with like a blog post or some highlight somewhere all the work yeah, that they're like, doing feel like we will tell them to submit a pr and the pr is the report i mean we're, we're going to scan the, the report to make sure that like uh anything that they're putting in tags that says private uh, is going to be wiped away or anything and you know anything that is like private or secure or any you know anything that is uh, not for public consumption um, we would take off or tell them to take off and then they would submit a PR into the community repo um, in their in their directory and then we can do some kind of retro at uh, either the July or August chairs and tech leads meetings uh, if you want, um, like we can just kind of, and then that might even be a good way to show other SIGs what's about to go on with them as well. Um, you know, kind of give, give people that heads up of, Hey, this is going to happen. This is going to, you know, we're going to need this from SIGs next year kind of thing. Right. Uh, I was just thinking about something return, something from us, which is an aggregate that reflects the health uh, as a, uh, whole Paris yeah we can do something like that I haven't um, thought about anything like that but I don't see why not uh, meet a blog post about you know the status of working groups and links to all of their individual reports I think would be nice uh, that's definitely a start sounds good I'm gonna write that on the issue as well. Hold on one sec. We have 10 more minutes left. Um, as to, do you think we have all the next steps and we've addressed all the open questions here? Yep. And I mean, we kind of didn't, we didn't necessarily address the like what we kind of need to be successful with coaching, but we kind of don't know yet. Um, I wanted to put that on there. It's kind of like a, we should probably like at least think of, start to think about that, not necessarily have an answer for it, you know, but as we're going into the reports, think about, oh, wow, how can I be a better coach here? Um, but I feel like for next steps, we, we have a lot of movement and I mean, we need to complete the template and the liaison. So I feel like we're moving, we're not blocked. So that's good. I think we've got awesome. most of what we need to launch. Yeah, and regarding the coaching, I think we can take working groups as a trial run and depending on how things go, we can write up a doc uh, with whatever yeah. things we learned and do that, uh, use that for six. Cool. Okay. Project board. Um, we talked about annual reports. We talked about election officers. Uh, I have no idea about this. Does anyone have information on KubeCon EU virtual session. I saw an email go out about China. I don't remember seeing something about EU. I think they canceled EU, right? Or no, am I? Right. right. You, I you, right. you went virtual. You went virtual, they still put out for maintainer track sessions. I actually think the deadline for maintainer track sessions was yesterday. Today, today. At the end of May. Is it today? Yeah, uh, because we... SIG Architecture, they asked us to as well. It's basically, do we still want to do? Do we think that it is useful to host an AMA in the context of a virtual KubeCon? Um, so wait. I have a question if you don't mind. So we're doing China virtual and then a month later doing Europe virtual and then a month later, Boston. 
in person slash virtual. Is that the delay of the KubeCon land? Does it make sense to have AMAs at all three of those for us since they're all like back to back to back? Or well, I mean, can at we least just my, in my initial gut about this period was like the part of the value of an AMA like in person is getting to ask questions in person as well as like the before discussion, the after discussion, that kind of stuff. In a virtual context, if somebody wants to ask the steering committee a question, we can do it either in the context of this public meeting or we can do it in a meet our contributors like special steering right. committee edition. Like right. we have other virtual forums outside of KubeCon to do this. So while I definitely see the value in an AMA session for an in-person KubeCon in a virtual setting, I don't necessarily see the same value for this. At least that's my gut instinct. I almost think it's more worthwhile for us to just explain how we work in a recorded session and then where they can go to ask these questions. And then, sorry, Lockie, you had your hand up. I apologize. I just saw that. You finished, Paris? Yeah. It's, it's my understanding that sessions will be pre-recorded and then you would be moderating the chat um, while it's happening. So they're supposed to be interactive for the content that you've already pre-recorded. So if that's the format, I still think there could be value to the community um, doing something like what Paris said. We could pre-record a session that answers these proposed agenda items and then field and moderate the questions as they come in. I don't think it's gonna be everybody speaking up. It's gonna be like a, like a webinar, a CNCF webinar in the questions come through Q and A, somebody will moderate those questions, then ask them and then we would answer them. I guess all this to say it depends on what the platform is, but the platform has allowance to have interactive, uh, you know, audience feedback while the session is happening. I think Chris A did that actually in person uh, for the last TOC AMA in San Diego and actually went, went really well, meaning he did this like 10 minute overview of what the TOC does with slides to like prep the audience so that like they didn't get any like wild questions or whatever. Um, and I think that that might be something we can do too, where it was just like, this is what we govern. This is how we govern. These are what community groups are. Um, that kind of thing, and then do sort of an AMA, that would be nice. I'm not volunteering. <laughs> oh my God. It's too quiet. I'm waiting for the, you're volunteering. <laughs> I'm happy to do it in the context of the, we're gonna have to find out sooner or later what the virtual platform is, and this could be yeah. a run through it. So if yeah. it is, it's good to have the experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'm plus one to that and I can help you out with that, Lucky. I think Christoph has the email thread going. So do you want me to ping you this up? Do we have to just click OK? We still would like this maintainer track, Christoph? Um, they... I, I think we need to just submit a new request for maintainer track. The the old one when we found out that the EU in like when EU before EU had been rescheduled, we all pulled out of it beforehand because none of our employers would let us go. So um, I, I, our previous maintainer track session is canceled, and we just need to submit a new one. I can definitely do that, or you can do that, Lockie. I don't have a preference. I'm happy to take it. I'll, I'll ping you for what we had and we'll get it submitted. Sounds good. If everybody, uh, is everybody else in agreement? I see Nikita, Dims, Aaron, Paris. Cool. Ship it, Paris. So we have like one and a half minutes left. Um, I'm not going to go through any more issues. Anything specific that people want to bring up, or would you like me to open any one of those issues? Uh, the only thing that I bring up is like, uh, I've been multitasking. I created a spreadsheet. 
it has all the community groups in it. We just need to select liaisons for them. So that can be a follow up that everyone does after the meeting is go through. We need to claim there's 37 um, community groups. So it'd be five and then two left over. So five to six community groups per member. Should we try to pick ones that we aren't active in or should we try to pick ones that we are active in? Or is there, do we care? I mean, not, I'm not saying, I'm not even saying that from like a bias angle or anything like that. I'm just saying, should we tart, like what, how, how do you feel like we should do, do that? What will make sense to you? Um, I don't care either way. I, I, th I personally thought it would be cool for me to go to a group that I've never been to before, um, just to like learn about them. Yeah, so like, yeah, not like the ones that I'm not active in kind of thing. I don't have a strong preference one way or another. Like, okay. you know, I, I don't think any of us are going to be biased. The liaison doesn't yeah, really, yeah. isn't like a decision maker right. or anything as far as it. Like, we, like any decisions still need to come to the committee. So I don't think it really matters one way or another. Okay. Just curious. I guess uh, I'd be cool with random assignment, honestly. Like, yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know, uh, Christoph, if you just wanted to like alphabetize, <laughs> yeah, go, go, go alphabetize down this list. I haven't done the math to figure out who draws what straws, but it really doesn't yeah. matter. It's, we'll yeah. all get something new. Cool. Yeah, I, I can, I could, I could see the list with that and we can see how that works out. The only yeah. other thing that we might need to end up doing is figuring out like, things that either have like overlapping meetings or something oh, yeah. like that. Like there may be some days where we need to like trade things around. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I can just see with a random assignment. Sounds good. So we're at time. Um, it worked, y'all. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, Lucky, you want to be the bosun for the next meeting, is that correct? Awesome. Yep, happy to, thanks. Bye, stay safe, take care, and see you all soon. Yeah. Bye, Thank everyone. You, Bosun, Nikita, looking forward to your bosuning, Lucky. Absolutely. Nice seeing everyone's faces. Cheers, all. Yeah, good to see y'all. Bye-bye. Miss y'all. See ya.